My community, rural, remote and isolated, under siege for seven weeks. As the fire grew, so did the concerns. My role as coordinator of the community centre unfolded. Support community, support visiting emergency services, set up phone trees, database. There never seems enough time in the day to deal with everything that is going on. Constant phone calls, inquiries, concerns, reports, photocopying, information and maps. Community dropping in, often I would forget to eat. Trying to keep calm, positive and reassuring while dealing with families and individuals under extreme pressure. Often day would turn to night and the smoke would be so thick that we needed to wear goggles and masks. I'd come home exhausted late at night and leave early in the morning. As the weeks go on I start feeling guilty. I am not at home helping my family prepare our property. My husband and children are continuously preparing. I receive a frantic phone call. No one could have predicted a fireball would travel 40 kilometres from the main fire front and hit the community of Galantaby. Communities could not be reached. Many families' livelihoods were destroyed, now just a memory. Many were distraught having to shoot suffering stock and saddened by the devastation. Dave, who lost everything, had just enough time to run into his dam with his whippet and pet kangaroo. Bill, who thought he could hear a jet coming, ran out of his house to discover the trees were being uprooted like matchsticks by fire winds. Both homes exploded in a ball of flames. He saved his life by crouching under a wet blanket behind his greater blade. The weather finally changed. No more hot days, hot winds. It even rained and the fires subsided. Work continues with community for healing and recovery. So many offers of help and assistance from all over the state. Looking back, I am overwhelmed at how our communities supported each other and their resilience to bounce back. <laughs>